Hello and welcome to Alive After Reading, and I'm Tim Niederreiter, and with me today is a returning guest, Tosca Lee. Welcome back, Tosca. Thank you so much for having me back. This is so so great to be back. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> it's great to have you back. <laughs> and uh, for those of us, I mean, I mean, this show is pretty small, but and and I, I mean, to be fair, I I a little intimidated when I looked through reviews for your new book on Amazon. I'm like, wow, that's <laughs> a lot for three days. <laughs> uh, since as of recording this and i mean that's 75 it was at i think and it was so solid i was like wow Yay! that's crazy anyway uh so you're probably better known than this show but tell our listeners a little bit about this sh- about yourself uh introduce yourself oh sure well i write novels um i just had my 10th published novel come out it is called the line between um and i'm looking forward to telling you more about that but um i write thrillers and i also write historical fiction I am a stepmother of four children. I'm married to a gorgeous man who farms, and um, I write, uh, I've written my last, I think, four novels from the old upstairs part of the farmhouse where I live. So um, I don't know what else to tell you. I I wanted to be a ballerina. I didn't mean to be a writer. So that was an, you know, that was a left turn somewhere. (laughs) <laughs> uh, <there's, laughs> yeah i mean that, and the thing about those is that a lot of those things you, i mean like you could in theory do one and then the other but it's difficult to do both I mean, you know in a timely oh, yeah. fashion <laughs> yeah, for sure yeah and and you know i turned 50 this year so i've kind of probably missed the window for that one and yeah just, and any I, anything athletic i missed pretty much the moment i was born <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, so I can understand that. So you mentioned the line between, and that book looks that book is like I said, doing very well on Amazon from the look of things, at least in the critical capacity. And it it just looks it looks really cool. And I actually I I read the beginning of the first sample chapter because I was very excited to have you back on. (laughs) And thank you. And I thought that's with it, or I maybe I just read the very beginning because I'm actually extremely distractible. But uh, (laughs) it was. I mean, your writing is really cool. I got to say, your style is very nice. Thank you. And oh, uh, thank you. yeah, and and now I'm kicking myself because there's there, there had to be a better word than nice. That was one of those <laughs> words. when I was in when I was in first grade. I, I had a teacher drill it into my head that you never use the word nice. It's just not a good descriptive word. Hmm. Well, <laughs> only because it's much. so overused. But nice is actually a nice word. I mean, it is. I mean, you're saying. <laughs> You're saying something good about someone. It's just that it's used a lot. So, yeah, but I'll take enough. it. I will take the compliment. So, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> so, so what's the line between about? The line between is about a young woman named Winter Roth, who is 22 years old. And at the beginning of the book, she has just been expelled from a doomsday cult on the American prairie. And so she tries to start over in this world, the outside world that she's been taught to regard as evil. And at at that same time as this is happening, um, a pandemic has begun to spread across the U.S. um, because of a disease, an an extinct, formerly extinct disease that has uh, reemerged from the melting Alaskan permafrost. And so as this disease starts spreading and becomes a pandemic to winter, it actually looks like the apocalypse that she's been taught to fear her entire life. And so it is, uh, it, it turns into a run for your life story. Winter becomes very instrumental um, as far as the disease storyline goes. And, um, you know, I just really, I like to keep readers up late at night and I like to, You know, when people write in and say, I skipped work or I skipped school, and I know this is quite bad of me, but I I consider it, you know, a a little personal badge of honor. Um, And I like keeping people up at night. So it's a high tension novel um, designed to uh, keep people on the edge edge of their seat and awake at night. So, yeah. Yeah, no, that sounds, that sounds awesome. It sounds really, and and thriller seems to, seems to cover it quite well, you know. Though there, there, there's a little bit of the, you know, there's just a hint of the historic, you know, the not really historical. That's prehistoric, probably with the Alaskan permafrost. <laughs> but uh, I, where, where I was thinking was the with the 
the narrator being semi unreliable sounds like you know not ne- not necessarily like in the first person mm-hmm. sense but in the sense that winter yeah. has this kind of perspective which infl- which makes her kind of see the world differently from most people she definitely sees the world differently because she's seeing the world through the lens of this cult that she came out of. And so things that normal people would look at and just accept as a way of life, she looks at and thinks, no, no, this is this is wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. And she sees more wrong than good. And so it's really a challenge for her to look around, especially as the world takes this turn with this pandemic and to be able to see good in the world. And, and it really is a story of how do you see good in the world and and how do you put others before yourself it it really is a story about that so the, a nice uh a really you know uh what's the word um you know uplifting kind of tone in the end there which yeah, I, I, mean, I really do enjoy or not tone but uh message maybe would be the yeah, word yeah it it is because you know uh, some people uh, some readers are calling this apocalyptic and it's it's kind of apocalyptic or pre-apocalyptic even mm-hmm. um and some readers um have called it dystopian and sometimes the the mood in the dystopian novels is very grim and kind of gray and um and i think that's very appropriate but i really wanted to approach this, this kind of story with the idea of hope and the idea of her- heroism. And so this this book and the sequel, which comes out in September, which is called A Single Light, and I'm finishing up uh, the copy edits on that right now, are really about hope and uh, finding that light um, for the future. Oh, yeah. Now, that's a, that's a, a, a you know, I find it just the, the, your candor when you're talking about this book just makes me really want to go read it, which is, well, uh, it's, a good, it's a good thing. I mean, it's awesome. That's the point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, it's like, wow, that just sounds so cool. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds well, like such a good you. book. Uh, I think and, it's kind of a fun story. You know, it's ripped from the headlines. I have to tell you. Oh, absolutely. I'm totally inspired by headlines. I had read this story about um, this reindeer carcass that had melted in the Siberian permafrost and it was full of anthrax and it made an entire nearby village sick and a young boy died. And I remember reading that headline going, what? And researching this, there are a lot of interesting, scary, but potentially scary things that are in the permafrost that scientists are anticipating that we will, um, you know, have to confront or come in contact with at some point as that permafrost continues to melt. So that was really um, fascinating to me. And then there's also um, an attack on the, uh, a cyber attack on the U S electrical grid, Mm. which has happened before. I mean, it's in the government report. So um, I really wanted to write something that was very timely and potentially very realistic. Yeah. It sounds like a little, almost like it, it sounded a little like almost like a Michael Crichton, but a lot closer to home than dinosaurs. Or I've actually had, yeah, I've had somebody say that before. It's kind of like Michael Crichton and there's tones of the handmaid's tale in there too, because of the cult. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm a big fan of the handmaid's tale. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, it's a, that's also fairly timely these days. I mean, it's just, in, in, well, in and there's sense. a sequel yeah. coming out. Did you see that? Um, no, I didn't know. <laughs> Margaret Atwood is doing a sequel, and I, I want to say it's called The Testament. And so mm. all these decades later, uh, it's on pre-order right now. Um, That's she's kind of incredible. <laughs> it is amazing. Um, I was really happy to see that. So, Imagine, I mean, I... Because I mean I mean I write independently, so when I write a book, mm-hmm. I'm like, well, I've got to have the sequel in the can immediately, <laughs> right, <laughs> or right. it's not going to make a dent. But right. uh, if not two sequels, I said I cannot right. imagine having a book that's like, wow, that's staying power. That's a, a book that sticks around, and then yeah. finally, and then you find that, and then she wants to write a sequel. What thirty years later? That's pretty incredible. I want to say the first one was published, and I want to say like early 80s i might be wrong oh wow so maybe yeah it's been a while in any case quite a while ago yeah yeah so yeah yeah, that's that's amazing and uh, but as far as the line between i've also got to say i don't know i mean i'm not sure how much you have to do with the marketing of this book but it looks really the cover is really cool the i've only seen i think Um, i've only seen the u.s edition if there's other editions but 
there's a lot of stuff going on. And as a, as a nascent cover design, I design my own covers now. So Ooh. it really, it's, it's, it's funny how much I twig to covers when I see one. I'm like, wow, that looks good. I wish I could do something <laughs> like that. Or actually I, I should do something like that in the future. Kind of thing. Uh, right. And the, just the red on there really makes it pop. I, you I know what? I really love cool. that. Yeah. You know, I, I've kind of had this in my past. I've had this tendency when publishers send the first comp, they call it a comp. Um, to see, you know, what you think about this direction, you know, generally the first one, I kind of go, uh, but this was the first one. That's <laughs> what it was. That's what it turned out to be. And I, I love it. And uh, we got the comp of the sequel too. And, you know, it was a, it was another one of those don't change a thing. I love it. So <laughs> yeah. yeah it always, feels, always feels a little weird to say that when, you know, it's like, well, you know, I I, I I I tend to be a little harsh about these things, but no, I think it's great. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, I, I mean, I really think I should ask to, about, you know, I'm very picky about these things, too. And so but it's really resonated with readers and, and they've really enjoyed it. So we even had a little fun with it. My husband bought me a red coat like the girl on the cover is wearing. And on a snowy day on the in the farm, you know, we went out and we we recreated the cover. So that's on Instagram and Facebook as well. So anybody oh, wants wonderful. to see that. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so I was just to move on a little bit though. It sounds like, I mean, if I'm, if I recall most of your other thrillers, I mean, you've written mostly thrillers, right. Uh, and most, but mostly they're historical in nature, correct? Well, yeah, I've done, um, so a lot of them in the past have been, I've, at any rate. Well, I've done suspense. I've done really, you know, ancient historical fiction. I've done okay. some fantasy thrillers and then, um, my last three have been solid, you know, thrillers more so, modern day yeah. more definitely more contemporary yeah for yeah. sure yeah, yeah con- contemporary that's the right word <laughs> yep <laughs> uh I, i'm so bad with words right now but uh but it's interesting because uh, i think this book is being being, cla- being called by some a medical thriller the line between yeah yeah and that's, it that's a really interesting little little genre there <laughs> little subgenre. Well, It was number one in medical thrillers when it came out. And I remember thinking, I didn't really think of it that way, but, but that's cool. I'll take it. I mean, it does have a disease and, you know, it is kind of a search for uh, a cure in a way. So um, I'll take it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Don't look a gift, gift horse in the mouth really. Right. Right. I'm not going to turn that away. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah so that and, and i thought that was that's that's an interesting thing because it seemed like a shift for you you know a little bit toward because because your other Definitely. books were more uh, even even the uh what was the the more recent progeny? one yeah progeny progeny and yeah that that was a little more was that a little more contemporary even than this this one's almost science fiction but very near future or a very yeah, like progeny. present science fiction yeah, the progeny was contemporary with kind of a historical mythology in the background. So, yeah. So this one, this one does happen here and now. It could happen today, um, or it could happen in three to five years. So, okay. Yeah. So, vi- yeah. yeah, not really science fiction, but you know, on the you know, on the edge of it's on the edge your future yeah. stuff. <laughs> and I think that's really cool. I mean, I mean, as a huge science fiction and fantasy nerd, of course, I enjoy all that stuff a lot and it's more that's more my genre than thriller but uh, I mean, yeah what'd you say Uh-oh. are you there yeah i'm, I'm there i'm here <laughs> what'd you say there uh you I, I was i was saying something about fantasy and science fiction no i i i very much enjoy that as well oh okay yeah. okay that's always couldn't have trouble hearing you so uh anyway so I guess what I'm saying is, do you have your, do you have your interests shifted or to the more contemporary, or are you just just moving through the ideas, you know, as they come up, kind of thing? That's a really good question, and you know, I um, I've always been interested by different genres, so I enjoy thrillers, I enjoy historical fiction, I enjoy romance, um, I enjoy all different kinds of things, and I. And I enjoy writing different kinds of things too. And I know that, um, you know, publishers would really, I think, kind of prefer that authors kind of go into one lane and stay there um, because it makes it very easy to market them. But, you know, for me, it feels a lot like, you know, eating the same dinner every night. You know, I don't want to eat 
cheeseburgers every night and I don't want to you know, eat sushi every night. Um, you know, and I, I feel like I've got a lot of different stories inside me. And, you know, it's fun to write those very deeply researched uh, kind of epic historical novels. But it's also fun to just write something that's very fast paced and see how late you can keep your reader up turning the pages. So, yeah. <laughs> that, that reminds me uh with the book i've been editing recently which is is definitely science fiction it's a, it's a very strange science fiction at that mm-hmm. um sent in a, in a universe with different laws of physics for those who don't know the, the first two books are already out so it's uh, this why I'm, I'm mentioning it for people who may have read book one at this point but uh mm-hmm. it's, the, it's the pillar universe but it, as i read these books as, as i because i read i wrote these books a few years ago and as I look through them, I'm like, yeah, these these get really deep into the character, and that's kind of what I'm getting the the vibe I'm getting from your when you talk about the line between. Honestly, it's this mm-hmm. very, you know, this character just so, seems like so distinctive, you know, in a mm-hmm. lot of ways. You know, I mean, and admittedly, I does it, it, the only the only thing that rang a bell with the you know former cult or like you know expelled from a cult thing was like that almost like that Kimmy Schmidt the the Netflix series. Hmm. but that was a comedy. So it was a completely different spin on it at any rate. You know, I find that uh, uh, readers are, are by and large really fascinated with cults um, more than you might think. And, and that makes sense to me because, you know, I find cults fascinating and, you know, we read and we write to know we're not alone. And, you know, if you're interested in something, there's probably somebody else who's interested in it too. So I've been, um, it's been really cool to see how many people kind of share that same fascination with that. And also the same kind of, um, I know that it's been said dystopian has been overdone and all this stuff, but, um, you know, there are a lot of readers who are really interested in these kind of end of the world potential, you know, scenarios. Um, you know, they're still fun. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, 10, 15 years ago, I think people might've thought, you know, okay, serial killers, that's kind of on the edge of of being right. of being too weird for people to to want to read about but now it seems like there's serial killer stuff everywhere right right well, of course and, yeah. and especially in, at least in the intervening years I and mean, granted they've always been they've always been around but they were much more but uh, yeah, that fiction's been around for a long time you know uh, silence of the lambs and all that stuff uh the right. great stuff in the past but for some reason i get the impression that yeah, I guess just as more stuff gets kind of canonized, I guess in the in the modern the the current kind of m- set of books. I don't I don't even know if canonized is the right word because it's so. more like it's it's just stuff that comes into the consciousness, right? And now people are saying, you know, I I, I, I never remember what it is, but people are always trying correcting each other now on the internet about how what the difference is between a sociopath and a psychopath, that kind of right. thing. <laughs> Well, I think there's always, you know, trends and I, I think there's definitely uh, trends and cycles in publishing too. You know, lately, um, you know, thanks to Gone Girl, there was a whole thing about the unreliable narrator, which was really a lot of fun, you know, and I had fun with that and the progeny too, um, you know, but there's always these kind of uh, interesting stories that, that make people say, wow, that's really cool. Let's do some more of that. So, and I don't think that's all bad. No, I think I think it's kind of it's kind of fascinating in its own right, though. This kind of this these trends being more than just fads, because a lot of the time it's like it's not so much fads. It's that the that the, the what people are interested in is moving somewhere, you know? Right. Well, and it does. It moves somewhere, and it kind of leads to something else. And you know, fads are are very fast happening things, but nothing happens very fast in the publishing world. So, <laughs> you know, a fad could span three to five years. So. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, and they were, even they say, you know, like there was the for you know in the indie world, there's the golden age of indie publishing, at least for some for like a lot of the genres I write in was you know it just ended like two years ago, maybe you know oh. like a year ago. Uh, it was it was going you know science fiction and fantasy and especially science fiction space opera was mm-hmm. huge in the, in you know 2015 to 2017, mm-hmm. and it was really easy to make a dent in there it, if you if people if you got in fast enough. With enough mm-hmm. enough books, um, relatively speaking, of course, because obviously if your book isn't good, you know it's still not still going to sink. So I mean, and and uh, and these writers still had to write fast, or they they got crushed because there was a lot of competition building up at that at that time. 
Yeah. But anyway, enough about that. But it, it does seem interesting to me that there's this kind that these trends, almost regardless of the method of publishing, are there on some level. Absolutely. Even, even though yeah, even though things seem to move much faster independently, you know. They they well they do they move faster independently because um, you know indie authors have the ability to uh, to do things and put fiction out and also market it much faster than traditional publishers can. So, but there are, um, you know, I definitely think there's cycles and trends. And I mean, look at the vampire thing. Remember that? Mm, yeah. And there's still vampires coming back. I mean, Jonathan Mayberry's V, v Wars is coming to Netflix now this year. <laughs> wow. So, I mean, yeah, they haven't gone away. It's just certain, you know, part like maybe the YA vampire romance part has kind of, okay, people got a little tired of that part maybe. But um, yeah, there's def- I think there, I think of them as kind of like bubbles and they don't quite go away. They just kind of sink down for a little bit and they might pop up again a little later. <laughs> yeah, vampires. I, I, I'm not sure if, the, mm-hmm. I actually don't remember. Yeah, there was definitely vampires in, uh, I guess maybe not vampires, but they were like smart zombies. In mm. uh, what is it? it was not, well, the only the one Jonathan Mayberry book that I read. Uh, I listened to the audio book. It was a while. Rotten Patient Ruin? Zero. Patient that Zero was, was the book I, I read. I listened to, which is a, a big inspiration to me because that was the one. That was one of the, with the first in his series where he did a bunch of third person, first person splits. Mm-hmm. Or so, the the main character was the first person. Everyone else was third. And that that I mean, and obviously that's a tra- it's kind of challenging to read it. It worked very well in the audio book though. I gotta say, um, you know, and I'm excited for him with uh, V Wars coming out. I think that looks really cool. So, um, yeah, so vampires are still there. They're still around. (laughs) They just won't die. (laughs) They won't die. (laughs) That's what they. Well, that that's kind of fitting. Uh, Mm -hmm. (laughs) So yeah, so as far as uh, we we are uh, running a little bit uh, toward the on the on the other side of the podcast now. But uh, so I, I always like to ask what what people are reading lately, and uh, so yeah, what what have you, anything anything standing out to you of the stuff you've been reading? You know, yeah, I you know I've been reading a lot of um, thrillers lately just because I've been writing in the genre. Um, mm-hmm. You know, my last well four books really because I've got the sequel um, to the line between on my desk right now. Um, so lately I've been reading Then She Was Gone, which is by Lisa Jewell. Mm. Um, and then I, I'm looking forward to also reading by Lisa Jewell, uh, Watching You, which is, which is new, just came out, um, uh, recently, very recently. Um, also Before We Were Strangers by Brenda Novak, which is her most recent one. And Brenda writes, um, I'd, I'd call it suspense. And then, um, Gosh, a, a cool one. I really enjoyed um, Blake Crouch's uh, Dark Matter um, mm. is a really cool one. He wrote uh, Wayward Pines, which was made into okay, yeah. oh, that sounds Blake familiar. Hulu. So, yeah. And so the Blake Crouch one, um, the Dark Matter book is kind of a time twisty brain bender. And that was super fun. So, Yeah. Well, neat. That's a, that's a good list of uh, recommendations for people once they get through the line between. <laughs> well, thank you. And you know, the the fun thing about about doing this job is, you know, you often get asked to endorse books and you know read some different kinds of things before they come out, with the hope that you know that you'll give a an endorsement or a blurb for that. And so it's really kind of fun to be able to read the works of some of my brilliant friends before the work comes out. It's kind of a neener neener situation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it does help. I definitely. Call when that you, a perk. <laughs> yeah. Definitely a perk. <laughs> and it definitely, and it probably helps when you're, you know, it helps you get to understand. Uh, I mean, I mean now, you know, we were talking about with your direction, people are writing in uh, as, oh, yeah. as, especially the, when you're talking the big way, the big deals in the field, you know, the big, the, the big time writers yeah. in a lot of cases. Like well, it's, Crouch, it's just you know? super fun. Yeah. It's, I just think it's super fun to, you know, see what people are doing and to be able to get a glimpse of it, um, you know, before it goes out there and becomes a living thing. So yeah, definitely very fun. Yeah. And that, that's, that's an interesting way to put that before it becomes mm-hmm. a living thing. So the book, yeah. the books really come into themselves when they, when they're released, that's kind of an unusual Maybe well, not an you know, unusual I mean, way to think about it, but that, that's interesting to me. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, it's 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 not that it's not living before it goes out. It's just it's truly in the wild when you release it, right? So fair enough. Yeah, it, you know, kind of out there, and it's got to fend for itself, like a kid who, who's grown up and goes off, you know, after school and has to go make it in the world, and you know, you do your best. And, um, you know, you love that kid, but, you know, you got to see like, you know, how they do out there on their own. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> so, yeah, that, that about does it though. So thanks for being on the show, Tosca. And, uh, where oh, can people find your pleasure. work? Where can people um, find your work and, uh, and your books? Well, you can find my books anywhere. Books are sold basically Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Books a Million, iTunes, um, We've got um, quite a few of the buy links um, on my website, which is toscalee.com. So that's T-O-S-C-A-L-E-E.com. If you want to follow me on social media, all those links are on there too, including BookBub and all those good places too. So um, maybe uh, toscalee.com is is a good place to start. Well, excellent. And as for this show, you can find more at mentalsellerpublications.com. You can find uh my books at amazon.com right now pretty much all exclusive which is a sad state in some ways but it definitely gives people a chance to read for free kindle unlimited Mm -hmm. is is useful for being discovered and still pretty small time here so uh love kindle unlimited (laughs) so yeah so give uh give the pillar universe a a read if you're out there or definitely uh the the spells of the curtain series that's still out so uh people uh have a have a great week thanks for listening Thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome. (laughs) That tears it.